Okay, we're getting right about 140 degree Fahrenheit air, a little bit higher. It's working great. You can hear it cranking away. Hey there, this is just a quick video to show you how to make one of these steel can air heaters. Okay, there's the start of it. Now just do the same thing all the way around. Perfect. This gives it a nice, even finish to the glue. it on there. Just to give you a quick idea. Alright, now I'm going to show you how I'm drilling the holes in the bottom of these cans here. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is drill vent holes in the bottom here, seven of them, one matching each can, and just line it up like that, and mark it with a pencil. Okay. Alright. One down, six to go. Okay, last one here. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and glue the screen on here. You want the screen to stick good, so that's why I'm using a lot of glue. Putting it on real thin and real even.
All right, here's a quick shot of the backing I bought to replace the cardboard. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and drill where we're going to put the fan. You see the pencil marks right there. Like that. And then we'll drill this one with a hole saw and install it. Now I'm going to go ahead and paint it outside. Alright, and there's the fan installed. Okay, now all we're going to do is take this metal flange and this, push it on there, just like this. That's a pretty tight fit as it is, but you're going to want to use the cable for sure to keep that on there permanently. You can use all four if you want, I'm just going to go with two. And there's the front again with the dryer hose hooked on. Okay guys, here it is running out in the sun right now. I'm going to take some temp measurements. It's working great. You can hear it cranking away. Okay, we're getting right about 140 degree Fahrenheit air, a little bit higher. It's exactly what I wanted to see. Again, 140 degree air coming out of there. I'll try to put the mic right up to it. It's a beautiful sight. With the winter coming up, I'm going to have this either coming in my living room or bedroom. I'm not sure which. I might make two of them. So I wanted to give you a quick rundown of the dimensions here. You see how that glass fits in there real tight like that. The main thing to getting that to fit like that is just to cut the wood the right length. So in this particular model, the glass is 20 inches by 32 inches. So to make that frame, the wood frame, you want to use exactly 9 feet of wood. I used an exact uh, total of 9 feet. It's 33 and 3 quarter inch pieces on the sides and 20 and 1 quarter inch pieces on the top and the bottom. So that's 108 inches total, or 9 feet. I uh, just put it together like that, screw it up tight, and you'll have anywhere from 1 16th to 1 8th of an inch gap around the edges. I tightened up those screws so there's only about a 16th of an inch around the edge. Then you just caulk it or seal it up afterwards. As far as the cardboard pieces, the cardboard rails on the sides, the long pieces are exactly 32 inches so they match the glass. And the pieces on the cross, I believe they're 19 inches, but you can just eyeball that as you're making yours. And about 3 quarter inch thick um, for insulation. You can uh, adjust that as needed. Again, the cans are just the Campbell style soup cans, generic version from Walmart, and then the uh, veggie cans. But again, you can just alternate that. The thickest can's about 3 inches thick. So I made the insulation part of it, the cardboard insulation, three and one quarter inches tall, and the wood is three and a half. That's why the glass lays right in there. So it's three and a half inch wood by three quarters. They sell it as a one by four, but it's really three quarters by um, the three and a half inches. So three and a half inches, then you make the insulation inside about a quarter inch lower, and then the uh, glass will fit right in there and pretty much lay flush more or less with the collector. So it looks really slick.